Hi guys, welcome to The Bite. My name is Jackie. Today's video is a little bit different. It's a kind of differently set up, but I had to share this with you today. This is a recipe for Zalabia, also known as Aweme, and they are little fried donuts that we always make during the Epiphany. The Epiphany is typically on just uh, January 6th. Some calendars do celebrate it on January 18th, but I've always known it to be done on the 6th and because today is the 5th and it's Sunday a lot of churches you will find especially Arab churches mainly Arab churches are making Zalabia today so this is something that is very traditional and is done as a uh, a way to commemorate the baptism of Jesus we make these little fried balls of dough and we dunk them directly into syrup which is kind of resembling the baptism of Jesus and it's a really beautiful way to kind of start the year and a lot of people actually consider this kind of their Christmas as well so many countries have their own versions of fried dough you'll find churros in Mexico you'll find funnel cakes here in the US and things like lucumades and zepole which is uh, from Greece and Italy respectively and those are very similar to what we'll be making today, but this is our version and we use our traditional simple syrup to dunk the um, donut balls in. Over here, I have something called the tetris. This is something that my, I can't remember if either my grandmother, my great grandmother or my husband's aunt made, but it actually has the Lord's Prayer written in Arabic. So I thought this would be something nice to stand next to today because it is, relevant and I wanted to share it with you and this is a traditional Palestinian stitching so if you want a whole video dedicated to that although it won't be food based it's a really nice way to share some Palestinian culture and I'd love to share that with you so let me know in the comments while you're here don't forget to subscribe if you're not and let's start making the zalabia so we need to start by making the akdir or the simple syrup and you've seen this many times in my videos before of Arab desserts but we have two parts sugar one part water and a squeeze of lemon. I am going to run through this really fast because you can see this in a lot of my other videos, but I'm just gonna show you really quickly here. I just start by adding all of the sugar into the pot and this is not gonna be needed. The whole entire batch of shabatir is not gonna be needed for all of the zanabia, but um, I like to make enough to have in the fridge. So if I ever make any other desserts, it's ready in the fridge for me. And if you want to cut this in half, you can, as long as it's two parts sugar, one part water, and a little squeeze of lemon juice. Before I turn the heat on, I like to give it a stir so that nothing is sticking to the bottom and it will prevent any sugar from burning at the bottom of the pot. So now that it's all stirred, I'm just going to turn the heat on to medium high. I want this to come to a boil and once it does I will reduce it until the syrup thickens and then I will add the lemon at the very end. Once it's done I remove it from the heat and set it aside. My atir or simple syrup is cooling on the back of the stove so now I can get started on the dough. First things first though I need to proof the yeast. So yeast is obviously a living organism and it needs to proof and kind of puff up before you add it into the dough. And that's gonna allow the dough to become nice and fluffy. So with the yeast, I have a little bit of sugar and I'm going to add a little bit of lukewarm water to the yeast and just let it sit right here. The rest of this water is going to be used for the dough. So I kind of just stir the bowl like this so that I don't get most of the yeast on like a fork or spoon or anything because it's hard to get off. So. That is gonna sit for about five minutes and you'll see it start to puff up. To the flour, I'm just going to add in the cornstarch and I'm going to give this a quick toss. I also have salt in here, I forgot to mention that. So cornstarch, flour, and salt. This is all mixed together and I'm going to set this aside until the yeast is ready. Check that out, just a few minutes later and it's already puffed up, almost doubled in size. I probably even left it a little bit longer than I needed to, but I'm going to add this directly into the flour mixture. Now I'm gonna start adding in the water, about a cup first, and I like to add it into the, the um, where the yeast was so that I can get all that extra yeast out of here. So I had two cups of warm water in here. I may not need the entire thing. I'm gonna leave about, about three quarters of a cup in there just to see how this is looking so far.
So I can definitely tell that I'm gonna need more water, so I'm gonna add in and leave about a quarter cup. It's important to use lukewarm water with the yeast. Anything too hot will kill the yeast, and anything too cold will not allow it to activate. So lukewarm is just right. And for the dough, the cornstarch gives it a really nice, crispy exterior, while the yeast keeps it nice and fluffy on the inside. The goal is to get rid of as much of these lumps as possible without overworking the dough. So that's what we're doing right here. This is looking beautiful. And I did not finish all two cups of water. I probably have about two tea tablespoons left in here, and I will note that on the blog. My full recipes are always on the blog, just so you know. The doughs are always kind of tricky though, because it also depends on the weather and how just so many different factors the humidity in the air anything so I am going to actually take a spatula and see all this on the sides I want to bring that down into the center of the bowl so that I can use every portion of this dough I am going to cover this with a kitchen towel place it in my microwave and let it rest and rise for one hour so here is the dough. It's been resting for exactly one hour and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir. I do that to just kind of get the dough moving a little bit. I have a mini cookie scoop here. Um, this is the smaller version as opposed to the ice cream scoop, which is larger. And I have my oil heating up behind me. I just want it to kind of raise up a little bit before we start frying. And I'm gonna fill these like halfway. If I were to do the entire scoop, these will be massive and I don't want them to be that large because the yeast will um, make them puff up in the fryer and I want them to be just like bite-sized, just enjoyable pieces. So they're gonna look pretty small. I mean, just that little amount of dough is enough and it looks really small, but it does the job, I promise you. So I will meet you at the fryer so we can start frying these up. So my oil is ready for frying and here's how I know. I put my wooden spoon in and it's beginning to create bubbles around the edges. So we are ready to start frying our zanabia. So like I said, I'm starting with really small amounts of dough. This might even be too much and my spoon got a little bit dirty because it fell in the dough, but here we go. There's number one. And automatically it starts to puff up, see that? So that is the perfect size of dough. I'm gonna keep frying these and then dunk them into the syrup. I'm gonna show you along the way, but I will finish these first. Once the zalabia achieve a golden brown color like these, I'm gonna remove them from the oil, shake them off to get rid of any excess, and set them on a paper towel. I'm going to eventually um, put a new batch of dough in here, and while the new batch is frying, I'm gonna take the hot donuts and stick them into the cool syrup. And it's very important that you do hot donuts and cooled syrup, otherwise your donuts will become really, really hard, and you definitely want them to be nice and fluffy. So let me stick the new batch of donuts in here, and then I'll show you the dunking process. The new batch is frying away and I'm going to take all of these hot donuts one by one and dunk them the syrup, just like so. Take my wooden spoon or you know whatever spoon and just lightly coat them and then take them out and put them onto a clean plate. I'm gonna leave them right here and then they are ready to eat. It really is a lot easier doing this with two hands, but let me just show you the Zalabia station. So these are frying. These ones are done in the syrup and they are nice and crispy. And these ones, I, oh, I'm using a slotted spoon to get rid of excess syrup because you don't want them swimming in the syrup. You just want them coated. So take them and then I'll put them directly on there. It definitely is, easier with two hands, but just to show you the system that I do, this is it. Oh, the zalabia is done frying. They look beautiful and golden brown. These are the ones that I dunked into the syrup just to uh, stay with the traditional aspect of zalabia on the epiphany day. But these, I'm going to just drizzle them because I don't really want them to be dunked. I kind of just want a light coating of the akdir. 
and you shouldn't finish all of this atar for this amount of zalabia. Um, you should be left with a lot and this will stay in the fridge. Now what I recommend that you do is take your hot zalabia right after it's been fried, let it sit on the paper towel for like 30 seconds to a minute to absorb any excess oil and put it in something that, like a bowl like this that you can drizzle the atar on immediately because it's a lot better to do it while it's hot um, because they can soften like this. And I made this mistake before, but I wanted to film the process and there was a lot of stations going on. So I wanted to make sure I was, you know, not burning these, but the ones that are the newest fry, they are still nice and crispy and they will stay nice and crispy overnight as well. So let me just bring you back in so I can take a bite. These are the bomb. There is nothing like them. My lipstick is probably already gone because I've been eating so many of these already, but listen to this crunch. You ready? And I do prefer to drizzle the atar on because when you bite into it, after you've dunked it into the syrup, the syrup kind of goes into all the little crevices of the donut. So when you bite in, it's like you're drooling syrup. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. If you like them really sweet, then by all means do it. Cause that's the traditional way anyways, but this is how I like it. And this is how I'm going to eat them. And I told my family I'd share with them. I don't know. I don't know. If you liked the format of this new video and you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my blog for the full recipe. It's written there always. Let me know what requests you have for the new year. I'm thinking healthy stuff, stuff that'll make you feel good. I'm thinking stuff for Lent, so meat and dairy free. But first, I'm thinking Super Bowl. So if you have any requests for any of those three ideas, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time on The Bite.